In this question, we are asked to evaluate the integral of the following expression. And if we study this expression carefully, we can see that essentially we have one function being multiplied by another function. And that is a good indication that you should be using integration by parts. Now, we have listed the integration by parts formula down here below, but before we can apply that formula, the first thing we need to do is to fill in this little template that we can use for integration by parts problems. And in that template, your first goal will be to assign u, and u will be one of the two functions. As to which function you should let u equal, make sure that you let u equal the function whose derivative becomes a simpler function. That trick usually works. So, for example, if we computed the derivative of 3z cubed, we would have 9z squared. Whereas if we computed the derivative of e to the z, we would still have e to the z. So, in the latter case, the derivative did not yield a simpler function, it actually yielded the same function. Whereas in the former case, we went from a cubic polynomial down to a quadratic polynomial, which in principle is slightly simpler. So it will turn out that the most effective selection here for u will be the 3z cubed. So we will let u equal 3z cubed, and then we will differentiate. We will compute the derivative of 3z cubed, which as noted is 9z squared, and then we would have dz here notationally. Now for the dv, you essentially will let that equal the rest of the expression. So it will equal the e to the z dz. Now, we will not differentiate here. We will actually integrate in order to go from dv to v. But of course, the integral of e to the z is, in fact, still e to the z. Now that we have those four parts, we can go over to the formula and plug them in. So, following along, we have the integral of u, which we called 3z cubed, times dv, which from our chart was e to the z dz, you will perhaps notice that this is just the original problem, so there's nothing surprising right there. But it's the other side of the equation that is most significant for us. We can see that on the right side we have u, which is 3z cubed, times v. We determined v to be e to the z, and then we will do minus the integral of, yet again, the v, which is e to the z, times du. And looking back at our chart, the du was 9z squared dz. So far, so good, but we're not done yet because we have to evaluate this integral in order to get the final answer. Now, before we evaluate that integral, it might be smart for us to factor out the 9. You recall when integrating, you can factor out constants. We'll also just switch to a single color for now. So we right now have 3z cubed e to the z minus 9 times the integral of, we'll just flip it around here, go z squared times e to the z dz. So our next task will be, again, to integrate this expression, but that's just about as hard as the original one. So unfortunately, what we have to do is yet another round of integration by parts. This is somewhat common in these problems. You, in the middle of doing one problem, will end up having to do a second or perhaps a third. And in this case, we're going to go ahead and do it a second time. So we'll operate in the same sort of manner. We're going to let u equal the z squared. And we do that because the derivative of z squared becomes a simpler function. It becomes 2z. And then don't forget the dz notationally. Over here we have dv is equal to e to the z dz. That's just the rest of this expression right here. And then we integrate to get v is equal to e to the z. Proceeding with the integration by parts formula, which in a nutshell is uv minus integral of v du, we'll just start plugging in. So we take our u, z squared, times our v, e to the z, minus the integral of our v times du, which is 2z dz. We'll factor out this 2 right here. So now we have z squared times e to the z minus 2 integral, and we'll just do a little switcheroo again here. We'll say z times e to the z dz. So this right here, remember, is the integral, if we go all the way back up, of this expression that we put in the box. So why don't we do the following? Why don't we take the answer that we had begun to develop, we'll bring it down here, 
And then what we'll do is for the boxed integral, we will replace it with this right here. And so we'll end up with the following expression, minus nine times. And then here comes that boxed integral that we evaluated with the second round of integration by parts. And you can see that we are still not done with the problem because we still have another integral to evaluate. It's actually this one that needs to be evaluated now. And yes, you guessed it, we will have to do a third and I think final round of integration by parts, thank goodness. So let's focus our attention on that yellow expression and then just go through it again. At least it's good practice for integration by parts. We will let u equal the z because the derivative becomes a much simpler function. It just becomes one. And then don't forget the dz. Then we have dv equaling the rest of it, which would be e to the z dz. We'll integrate to get v and then we'll proceed. So remember one more time, uv minus integral v du. So we take our u, we multiply it by our v, and then we subtract the integral of our v times our du. Thankfully, and finally, we are left with a simple integral. That's the integral of e to the z, and the integral of e to the z is e to the z. So this is the integral that we're going to substitute into where we highlighted things in yellow. So this is the last little elaborate substitution that I think we have to do. So we'll come down here, pop this down, and then again, I'll draw another arrow. We're gonna substitute that where that yellow integral is. So the final answer, at least before simplifying, will look like the following. Minus two, and then we're gonna sub in this z e to the z minus e to the z. And I suppose for attractiveness, for clarity, we can do some distributing here. Why don't we distribute this minus two? So we'll have three z cubed e to the z minus nine bracket z squared e to the z minus two z e to the z. Now be careful here, it's gonna become plus two e to the z because of, of course, this minus and this minus. And then finally, I suppose we might wanna distribute this minus nine into the uh, three terms of the bracketed expression. So here we have it, three z cubed e to the z minus nine z squared e to the z plus 18 z e to the z. Notice the plus again because a minus combined with a minus. And then we're gonna have a minus 18 e to the z. And then don't forget the constant of integration at the end of the problem. And that indeed becomes our final answer.